And John, we'll take you through the next thing. Okay. You guys hear me all right? Sound good? You're here for the um, AWS Azure, how to set your accounts up for InterCloud Fabric. That's the one you want to be at. Or just here to see me. Either way, you're going to win. Um, so, InterCloud Fabric, AWS, and Azure accounts set up in utilization. So it, it doesn't seem like it'd be a big deal. It's really not a big deal, but it's some things you have to know before you go ahead and get started. So we're going to talk about uh, a little bit about InterCloud Fabric, or how to get some hands on it. Um, a little bit about the requirements for AWS and then how to connect to AWS. A little bit about the requirements for Azure, how to connect to Azure, and then we'll wrap it up. So I'm doing this one for an hour, and then after this session, I'm doing a half an hour on InterCloud Fabric API. So if you're interested in that, um, I was going to say stick around, but they want you to rescan for that one. So you know, make sure you do that, and it, I think it counts towards the, the loot. I just talked about what we're going to talk about. So hands on. Um, oh, by the way, I should back up and say I'm John McDonough. Uh, Cisco InterCloud Fabric Technical Marketing Engineer. Um, look for me on communities.cisco.com. I write some blogs out there about InterCloud Fabric. As well, look on blogs.cisco.com and uh, I write some blogs there as well for the cloud group, uh, mostly concerning InterCloud Fabric. And if you go to that one, you'll see a picture of my 1972 Trans Am, which is uh, it's just beautiful to behold, although I don't own it anymore, which is sad for me. So anyway, some hands on. With the download of InterCloud Fabric from Cisco.com, it comes with a 60-day license and a 10 VM um, light, uh, hybrid cloud units. It actually comes with these things called 20 hy uh, hyper cloud units, uh, hybrid cloud units, excuse me, uh, which on Azure or Amazon really only counts for about 10 VMs. With Azure and Amazon, we consume two hybrid cloud units. But anyway, InterCloud Fabric downloaded comes with a 60-day license and 20 hybrid cloud units, which translates to 10 VMs on Azure or Amazon. And that's only running VMs. So if you want to try InterCloud Fabric and you want to put 50 VMs out there, as long as only uh, 10 of them are running, you're in good shape. Um, with Azure, the account that you create with Azure will work with all aspects of InterCloud Fabric. So, um, you know, Azure has this ability, or they, they give you a 30-day, $200 credit for, for Azure when you sign up. And that works with InterCloud Fabric. So literally, it's free, right? If you want to try InterCloud Fabric for free, you can do that. Um, of course, if you need support or customer uh, support type of uh, intervention, that may not be free, but um, you can try the software for free. Sadly, though, the free tier for AWS does not work. So you can't try InterCloud Fabric with AWS for free. So, I, which brings me to the question of who's tried InterCloud Fabric, or who's uh, downloaded, who has it installed? So that's a resounding nobody. <laughs> well, after today, I think you're gonna be so excited about it, and then actually Wednesday, a uh, little self-promotion, I'm doing a, a two-hour breakout on InterCloud Fabric on how to set it up. Um, et cetera, et cetera. So you might want to come to that one. It's Wednesday morning, 8 a.m., so a great way to start your day. Um, we'll talk about InterCloud Fabric. and, and um, So that way, if you download it for free, come to my session by Wednesday afternoon, you have cloud, you'll have VMs in the cloud and in your data center as if they were layer two adjacent. DevNet Sandbox, you can try out the InterCloud Fabric API. So if you come to the next session and, and you listen to my talk then, you'll want to run right to the sandbox place and uh, try the, uh, AC, uh, the ICF um, REST APIs. And then if you have access to Cisco's D cloud environment, and I know that I don't think everybody has access to it, but uh, customers through partners or some customers directly have access to D cloud, and the latest release for InterCloud Fabric 221, which was released, I believe, uh, the third week of April or the fourth week of April, um, that is available, that, well, it says now supporting, but I got the word today that it's coming soon. So it might be by this time next week that we're supporting the latest release of InterCloud Fabric in dCloud. So just a brief, what is InterCloud and what is InterCloud Fabric? So InterCloud is Cisco's vision of all the clouds coming together like the internet. So all these clouds can be connected in a very um, homogenized way. I don't mean to say very like, you know, sort of washed out kind of way, but 
Uh, with InterCloud Fabric, the software that connects all these clouds, what we're saying you can do is that you can work with one cloud provider and another cloud provider very, uh, very much in the same manner by putting Cisco InterCloud services out there and those cloud providers uh, and moving from one cloud provider to another, they'll work the same way. So Cisco's vision of InterCloud is not, is not just InterCloud Fabric, that's a component. And if you look at that thing in the middle with all the dots and the lines connecting back and forth, think of that as InterCloud Fabric connecting the components that are, are connecting the things that make up InterCloud. High level view of the architecture of InterCloud. What we have on the um, lower left hand side is the private cloud and on the lower right side is the provider cloud. InterCloud Fabric allows you to create a layer two extension from one cloud to another. Layer two extension means you can put your VLANs out into the provider cloud. You can use your same IP address space out in the provider cloud. And those VMs that are running in the provider cloud appear to all the other resources and entities within your environment or all the resources and entities within your environment appear to those VMs as being layer two adjacent. So there's no, um, there's no uh, hardware in between there that does any kind of complex VPN setup. There's nothing except two VMs really that are, one's running in the provider uh, enterprise or one's running in the private enterprise and one's running in the private cloud. Those two connect a layer, create a layer two secure extension and uh, the communications for VMs in the provider cloud go across that layer two extension. So the um, VMs themselves appear to be layer two adjacent. If you were to do a ping, you might, you'll see a longer response time, but they, you know, for all intents and purposes, those VMs in the cloud, if they want to use a database uh, authentication mechanism, if they want to use uh, you know, a source code repository that has an enterprise IP address, it's going to see them in the enterprise just as if they were in the same data center. And then there's other components. There's the uh, InterCloud Fabric Director, which is the graphical interface to, to do the operations, one for the admin, one component of it for the admin, and one component of it for the, for the users. And if anybody has any questions while I'm going along, please feel free to you know, raise your hand, ask the question, and, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to answer it intelligently and, and uh, go from there. So, but basically, at the lowest level, InterCloud Fabric creates a layer two extension from the private side to the provider side, and your traffic from VMs in your enterprise to VMs in the, pri in the provider cloud is uh, encrypted um, to, I think we have four or five different encryption algorithms, uh, 228, two or 256. And we also allow you to choose none. So if you really want to put workloads out there and you don't care the, about the traffic going back and forth, you don't have to encrypt it at all. InterCloud Fabric, um, I think the important thing to, to get from this, uh, this slide is the the core services, the networking, the security, the VM portability, the management and visibility of those VMs running in the provider cloud, and we do have APIs, so there's some an ability there for uh, uh, automation. VM portability is, is actually, it's VM migration. We'll migrate VMs from one side to the other, or from the provider back to the enterprise. All right. I talked about the core services, so we'll move ahead, because I want to get you to what, we, uh, what you're here for. So InterCloud Fabric account requirements for AWS, and, and we'll get to Azure after we do the AWS. The, the idea is that you're going to create a connection to these cloud providers, but we do need some infrastructure that runs in the enterprise, and we do need some infrastructure that runs in the cloud provider. That infrastructure that runs in the cloud provider is either one or more VMs, but what do you need from an administrative perspective for those VMs to run, and that's what we're, we're gonna cover in the rest of this hour. So, has any, who has an Amazon AWS account? All right, so a couple of screenshots here of how to get an account, you know, just bear with it, but it's, for, for the people who haven't done it yet, it's, uh, you know, it's just a process going through with Amazon and creating an account. So you sign into Amazon, you'll create your, your login credentials, you'll sign up for AWS. You have to log in, log out, log back in again. You have to give them some contact information, some payment information, identity verification, you know, standard stuff that you're doing uh, for these accounts. And um, you know, it's, pretty, it's pretty basic stuff to set up an account like any other provider that you might set up something with. Select the support plan, um, launch the management console using the credentials just created, 
And then from this point forward, once you're logged in, is what you would do for AWS services normally, but also for InterCloud Fabric. So we'll key in on what, what has to happen for InterCloud Fabric. So steps one through eight, standard stuff for creating an account, eight through 11, and 12 through 20, not a lot of steps, um, are what you have to do to create the account. So instead of reading through these, we'll, we'll, take, a, we'll take a look at what the process is. All right. So sign up for Amazon. I thought this was confusing because I didn't know how to just go sign up. But it's, you, you click the get started for free, even though you're going to probably pay for it, click get started for free. Create an account. Now, when I first did this, I created it with my regular Amazon account name, which my wife didn't understand what I was, I was buying. <laughs> She's like, but what, what's, a, what did, what's the Cisco CSR 1000V? When's it getting shipped here? Why did you, why did you buy that? I was like, no, no, honey, it, it's, it's work stuff. It's just, and then it glazed, glazed out. She didn't care what I was talking about. Uh, so you're gonna create some log, uh, Amazon login credentials. And like this guy here, cloud guy, I think I, uh, cloud guy at I need more cloud.com. Sorry, I'm not super creative. Um, but anyway, you create the, the account, you sign in for the account, um, and then some contact information because who's doing this thing? So literally, you're using Amazon's infrastructure so they want to know a bit about you. So you fill in the contact information. The payment information, even though the get started for free is free, and like I said earlier, the free tier for Amazon does not work with InterCloud Fabric. You need an actual uh, paid account so, so you can you get the instances that are required for InterCloud Fabric. But even though it's free, it's like one of those tried for two weeks, and uh, then we start billing you, and you forget to turn it off, and you know, you'll be sad. But anyway, if you want to use Amazon with InterCloud Fabric, you do have to uh, put your payment information in, and you do have to activate more than the free tier for Amazon. Identity verification: you are who you say you are. You know, you do a phone number. They call you. They'll give you um, a code. You type it in. So if you've done this already. Uh, you're, f you're familiar with that, but if you haven't, just so be ready to do that. You don't want to be sitting on a plane trying to set this up because they're going to call you on the plane. Um, but you do your identity verification. Support. So for, for the support process with um, uh, Amazon, you pick a support plan. Now, something to mention about InterCloud Fabric and Amazon, and it's the same with Azure, is that they don't know what we're doing in their cloud. All right? It's not super top secret or anything. It's not like we're hiding it from Amazon or Azure, but they don't know what we're doing. They don't know that the VM that we've created there, that is the peer side of this layer two extension, is a virtual ethernet module that is helping us pass traffic back and forth. To them, it's just a workload in their environment. It's a C3 2X large. They don't know what it is. So if it's not working, don't call Amazon for that support because they're gonna say, I don't know what you're talking about, right? This uh, intercloud fabric, what? So anyway, don't call Amazon for support. However, for $49 a month, basic support is included, right? For $49 a month with your Amazon account. If you are going to be using intercloud fabric and you do have a question about creating a VPC, not specifically for inter intercloud fabric, but creating a VPC, then you might wanna have this basic $49 a month support. I'm not selling Amazon. Although, that's not a bad idea. I get like a referral kind of. Anyway, $49 a month, basic support. If you don't do it, it's not going to stop InterCloud Fabric from working. You're not going to call them about InterCloud Fabric anyway. So it doesn't matter. All right, so you need to pick a support plan. You can pick basic and you can move forward. All right. For some reason, the credentials you just could create, that you've just created, they, they knock you out and you gotta log back in. It's not broken, it's just the way the process works. Now I gotta tell you something though, the first time I did this back in October was different than when I did it two days ago to make sure that my slides were still correct. Did I wait too long, did I procrastinate? Maybe I did a little bit, my fault. But I did change some slides because it did change a little bit. Um, so the knowledge that you might have had from six months ago might be a little bit different. All right, so now we're getting to InterCloud Fabric part. What can I do? How can I use InterCloud Fabric? So you want to create some security credentials. So back in October when I first signed up, the root credentials were part of my account, right? You log in, you create, the, you create your credentials, and you have root credentials. 
Now, my recommendation is that you don't ever use the root credentials for InterCloud Fabric. Create users, give those users the, the correct rights, and then those users create VMs or connections for InterCloud Fabric, and you have them sort of segmented who did what. But now when you create your account, Amazon automatically deletes your root credentials. The, the security key or the secret access ID key, the super top secret stuff, Amazon goes ahead and deletes it for you. So I don't know how you would use the root credentials. But anyway, you want to create credentials for, or you want to create users and give those users credentials. Now, I'm going to show you the, the sort of solo way, the, the standalone way for this to work. The, um, the idea, though, is that the credentials you create, you're going to give on a per user basis. However, you're going to give those users rights. And those rights are going to let, let them either create um, instances in Amazon or not, um, create VPCs or not, create or use S3 or not. You know, it really depends on what you want to allow them to do. So I'm showing you the user way to do this. Now, the way I've pretty much standardized in my environments that I set up is that I create a group. I give the gr different groups the rights that I want them to have, and then I associate the users to those groups. But whatever the case, it, it's whether you flip it one way or the other, you're still going to give somebody the rights that they need. So you create a user. Give the user a name. When you create that user, Amazon is going to tell you to download the security credentials for that user that you just created. You can click on that little twisty right up there next to show user group or user security credentials, and it'll show you the credentials for that user, or you can download them. Once you, once you look at them and download them, it's kind of like Snapchat, you, you, don't get, you can't get them back. Now, I think that's how Snapchat works, at least that's how my kids tell me it works. Um, but once you download those credentials, you can't get that pair any ever again. The only way to get that another pair is to go create it for that user again. All right? So download the credentials, um, store them someplace super secret, like I put mine on a, on a, a, a corporate website um, so that all the other people could use them. So it's not super secret, but within my group, it's super secret. So, you create the user. Oh, there they are, the super secret keys. These don't work anymore, so if you have, um, what's that called, didactic memory or, or whatever, where you can just do that, you could try them, they're not gonna work. Um, or at least I don't think so. I'm gonna have to quick after this session go and see if I turn those off. But you download them, you get the CVS file, and you have them, keep it somewhere secret, keep it somewhere safe. And so now I have this user. This user can do nothing on Amazon, zero, that's my zero, that's not my okay, that's my zero, I should go like that. They can do nothing, right? Um, which is the opposite on Azure, we'll see that that user can do everything. But anyway, this user can do nothing until you give them the rights to do something. So what do we need for InterCloud Fabric? We need some policies associated with that user to give them the ability to use InterCloud Fabric. And when I say user, I mean the admin. So let me be a little bit, a little bit clearer if I haven't been, if I've been not clear up to this point. The users that are being created in Amazon for InterCloud Fabric are admin users of InterCloud Fabric. The end user that uses InterCloud Fabric, that it goes ahead and orders a virtual machine that gets put out into the Amazon's cloud that is layer two extended from your environment, that user is not being created here in InterCloud Fabric. It is the administrative user that will be creating the, the layer two extensions, that will be putting the services out there, the routing services, the firewall services, the load balancing service when we have it, the um, storage synchronization service when we have it. Um, those services are, are what these users are going to be setting up. These are admin users that you're creating. And what do admin users need? Admin users need EC2 full access. They need S3 full access, and they need marketplace full access. So why do they need EC2 full access? Because they're creating, they're creating VMs in EC2. That's where we create our InterCloud Fabric VMs. Why do they need S3? Well, you only need S3 right now if you're going to put Windows VMs out in Amazon that are layer two extended with InterCloud Fabric. If you're only going to be putting Linux VMs out there, you don't need S3. S3 is for Windows because we use S3 as a temporary um, copy space. But 
if you're out there creating this, the rights, you might as well go ahead and put the S3 stuff in. And um, marketplace full access. You need marketplace full access because the routing service that we have in Amazon is the CSR 1000V. So in order to use the CSR 1000V, the admin user that's logged in through InterCloud Fabric and the workflows that are being through, executed through InterCloud Fabric need to have access to Marketplace. And there is another step for the CSR, and we'll get there. But um, So EC2 full access, S3 full access, Marketplace full access. Now, it used to be back in October when I first did this in Amazon, you went and clicked policies, and you said, put these policies into my account. Well, the way you do it now is through this policy builder where you go to the, um, the you, you create a, a, use the policy generator underneath the user or the group. You have to go to the policy generator and for each line in here, for each EC2 full access, S3 full access, or marketplace full access, you have to actually create the policy and put that, or create the, generate the, the code, it's, it's JSON code that uh, creates the, this policy or that embodies the policy and create this one policy that has these three things in it or multiple policies that have, these, that have each one of these in it. However you do, it's up to you. But you need to use the policy generator um, and create the policy. And so it'll create this JSON that'll um, show what you have, uh, the action that you have and what you have, the resource that you have access to. So here is, this is EC2, um, S3, and Marketplace. It's kind of cut off on the bottom of the screen there. But this is full access. Now you could actually go into this policy and modify it a little bit to modify the regions and the, um, the resources that the user has access to. But if you want to do this issue free the first time around, just give yourself full access or whoever you're doing this for. So you create the policy, you apply it, and you go ahead and, and give that part of the user. Now, for VPC capabilities with Amazon, so InterCloud Fabric works with Amazon in two methodologies. It works with EC2 Classic, and it works with um, VPC environments. So the latest release works in a VPC environment as well. You need to give the user, or the group that you're associating this user with, Amazon VPC full access. So four things you need, EC2, S3, Marketplace, and VPC. Those four entities within Amazon need to have full access so that the InterCloud Fabric workflows that run have the ability to utilize those uh, components. So for VPC, it's a little bit different. You're attaching a policy, you're not using the policy generator, but you're attaching this policy. So now, you've created a user that has all the appropriate policies associated with it, and you're going to allow that user to connect to Amazon. Again, it's the admin user, not the, um, not the, the, the end user of Am InterCloud Fabric. So how do you connect to InterCloud Fabric? Now, I took a poll earlier, so it was a big, resounding, nobody's implemented InterCloud Fabric. How about uh, UCS Director? Anybody use UCS Director? All right, so we're 100% non-utilization. All right, I got it. <laughs> so these screens mean nothing to you um, if you haven't used either one. So, but they're going to be super familiar to you by Wednesday afternoon once you've installed InterCloud Fabric for free and utilized Azure for free. It's a wizard-driven, form-based process. It's not, you know, it's, it's not super hard. Right? But the way it works is that for, uh, on the, on the left-hand graphic, with Amazon Classic, you, you pick from the drop-down menu Amazon Classic. So the cloud type is Amazon, and underneath that cloud type drop-down, you'll see Amazon, Azure, and Cisco, Cisco Cloud Services hyphen V. The V stands for virtualization. I, it didn't make any sense. I don't know why it's there. It'll probably change but Cisco Cloud Services hyphen V, and that's every other cloud provider that we work with. So we work with Amazon, Azure, and a whole bunch of others, but they're all, they're all bundled up under Cisco Cloud Services V. That's not the choice you want. You want Amazon, and if you want to do Amazon Classic, which is just regular straight ahead EC2 Classic, you put in your access ID, you put in your access key, you click validate credentials, and it comes back with all the regions that we work in in Amazon. And we work in every generally available region in Amazon except for Frankfurt. We don't work in Frankfurt yet. 
So, because this is a technical group, I'll tell you why we don't work in Frankfurt. We use Apache J Clouds as our hybrid cloud management like interface, or so Apache J Clouds. We're running on Apache J Clouds version two or version three. I can't tell you exactly. It's not that it's super secret. I just don't know. But it's not the one that Amazon Frankfurt's running on. Amazon Frankfurt is running on J Clouds version four, I believe. So when we query for all the environments that work with our version of J Cloud, all come back except for Amazon Frankfurt. The summer fall release of InterCloud Fabric, and, and you know what? We had a, like a three and a half, four month cadence for InterCloud Fabric. But since none of you are using it yet anyway, it's not like you guys are like, oh my god, I can't wait till the next version comes out. But the summer fall version, um, I believe, will support Frankfurt. So we work with all generally available clouds on Amazon except for Frankfurt. But you can pick Ireland. That's pretty close to Frankfurt, you know, in a geographic sense, like a global sense, right? Not from, you know, well, whatever. So you can pick Ireland, and that will work in Europe for you. Um, for VPC, it's a little bit different. Right? If you want to work with a, with a VPC in Amazon, the VPC has to be pre-existing within Amazon's cloud. The next version of InterCloud Fabric, the summer fall release, you guys are eagerly awaiting that one, I know. That release will go and discover the VPCs that are out there, and it will bring back, or excuse me, I take that back. It will create the VPC for you. If you want to create a VPC as part of creating a cloud connection, and you want it to be a brand new VPC, InterCloud Fabric will do that. The current version will go and discover all the regions. Once you click validate credentials and you've picked Amazon VPC, see those two drop downs are a little bit different. You validate your credentials, goes, finds the regions. Within that region, it will find all the VPCs in that region. Within that VPC, it'll find all the subnets. And you'll pick the region, the VPC in that region, and then the subnet within that VPC in order to create your InterCloud Fabric connection. So who's worked with Amazon VPCs? All right, oh, sweet. So you know what I'm talking about, right? You create some subnets. InterCloud Fabric works in a particular subnet in the VPC. However, if you want to talk to other VMs in other subnets in that same VPC, it's achievable. They're not like locked out. Oh my gosh, you can't talk to those VMs. But Amazon, or excuse me, InterCloud Fabric works with um, a particular subnet within a VPC in Amazon. All right? Make sense? All right. Remember before I said we were talking about the CSR and why you need marketplace full access? The CSR, the InterCloud Fabric router, which is really the CSR 1000V, is how you do inter-VLAN routing in Amazon between your VMs. So um, if you have two VMs out there on two different extended VLANs from your enterprise and you want them to talk to each other, communicate with each other, that traffic without the CSR, without the router, is going to come back to the enterprise, get routed in the enterprise, and go back out to the cloud. But if you want them to uh, communicate directly within the cloud, you deploy a CSR, a cloud services router, which is the cloud services router directly from Amazon Marketplace. And that router um, that we have dubbed the InterCloud Fabric Router is really the CSR, but we only support four features on it right now. So hopefully that's, it's four is enough. It's inter-VLAN routing, it's default gateway and extended default gateway, which if you want to know more about that, come to my Wednesday session where I talk about default gateway and extended default gateway. Um, natting, dynamic and static natting, and VPN support. So you could put a, a, this Cisco CSR's 1000V router in your intercloud fabric and have a VPN uh, set up there so that branch offices or users can connect to that VPN. But anyway, getting back to the 1000V, before you can implement Cisco's uh, CSR 1000V in intercloud fabric, you have to go to Amazon and find it, click on it, and click the continue button to say you've accepted the rights. If you don't do that, and you go to deploy a CSR from the InterCloud Fabric uh, workflows, it, it'll, it'll stall, it'll say you can't deploy the, the CSR. So you go there, you click it, and you're good to go. The firewall, the firewalling component that we have with InterCloud Fabric is actually pushed up to uh, Amazon from the, um, 
from the intercloud fabric uh, that component that's running in the enterprise. So for the CSR for Amazon, you actually have to go and accept the, 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 user, the, the user agreement is what it is. All right. So you've created the account, you've created some users, you've gotten the keys, you've created the policies, you've created the, you've attached the VPC policy, you've accepted the, the rights um, for, for the CSR, you've done all the things you need to do, you've deployed a cloud connection from your EnterCloud Fabric in your, in your enterprise data center to Amazon, you've done all this, and you go to deploy your 20th instance of a VM and it all falls over. Well, not really falls over. It just doesn't happen. So, and you get an error message back, or your user comes to you and says, look, I, I wanted to deploy another VM for, for, for dev test or you know, for this marketing campaign that we have, and it didn't get deployed, why? Well, when you create an account in Amazon, they, you, there are instance limits put on that account. And I think it's typically, it's like 20 VMs Instant li instance limit for the standard VMs, like the, the C versions and the M versions of the VMs. The larger, the larger ones, like the Gs or the, I, don't, I forget what the letter is, those ones are already severely reduced because Amazon doesn't want you to go ahead and just create um, you know, 100 VMs, potentially, without them being aware of what your, um, what your utilization may be. So that they, you know, there's this idea, we'll give you 20 up front, um, and then if you want more, you have to ask us. So that's what this, this is about. You need to go and ask Amazon, not right away, but if you are going to go beyond the limits that are associated with your accounts, and you can always check what your limits are by going to your account and clicking on limits. Now these limits that I'm showing here are ones that I've had increased to 100, but the idea is that once you uh, start deploying things with InterCloud Fabric, you have to be aware of what the cloud provider puts as a limitation on you. Now, Amazon has my, my credit card, and I can go ahead and create stuff you know, on the fly as much as I want until I get to a, a limit that they've imposed. Now, from an InterCloud Fabric standpoint, InterCloud Fabric counts hybrid cloud unit licenses. InterCloud Fabric will tell you if you can't deploy another VM into the cloud provider based on the license. But it won't tell you that Amazon says you've used up all your instances unless you go when the, when the deployment fails, you go and look at the log and why it fails and it says you don't have any more resources available to you on Amazon. Even though you've put your credit card in there and said, hey, you know, let me consume as much as I want. If you got my payment information, just let me consume it. They still keep you limited. So you have to go ahead and request from Amazon some instance increases if you are going to go beyond the standard um, instances that they have out there. And so if as a matter of, of awareness, if you deploy a single connection from the enterprise to the cloud provider, you're going to create at least one C32X large as the peer side of that, of that layer two extension. So that's one VM instance that you've already consumed at Amazon. If you deploy an intercloud fabric router, you're going to deploy a C3X large. That's two instances. If you deploy a, a virtual security gateway or the intercloud fabric um, firewall, that is a, an M3 medium. So that's three intercloud fabric or three v AWS instances. So you see those instances are being counted. And actually I should point out from an intercloud fabric licensing standpoint, infrastructure VMs, services VMs, do not consume hybrid cloud units, do not consume the intercloud fabric licensing mechanism. So anything that is running that's anything that is not an infrastructure VM or a service VM from InterCloud Fabric, and any VM that is not running is not consuming an InterCloud Fabric hybrid cloud unit. All right. So that was Amazon. Any questions on Amazon account utilization or setup? Anything that wasn't clear? All right. All right so Azure. Azure is so much easier. Right? It's like, it's like Microsoft said, here's a cloud that you want to use, and everybody's like, oh, Microsoft, I want to use your cloud. But uh, I'll use Amazon's cloud, right? But Microsoft makes it so easy. And maybe that's, they make it easy now, and then they'll get you later on some kind of other thing. But I don't know, I, that's, don't quote me anybody. Um, so what do you do? You sign up for the free account. Remember earlier I said InterCloud Fabric is free for 60 days with 20 hybrid cloud units. Download it, 
everything you need. All the services are there, the routing services, the, um, the firewall services, all wrapped up into InterCloud Fabric. You're not downloading this component from Cisco and some other component from Cisco. It all comes pre-bundled, pre-configured to work with each other. You deploy the OVA and you're, you're really pretty much ready to go. But anyway, back to Azure. So Azure, sign up for the account, try it for free, and it is legitimately free, although they do ask for a credit card, and that free account does work with InterCloud Fabric. For 30 days, they give you $200 worth of credit. Verify your account or your email address, sign in again, they do a mobile verification. You enter payment information, you do, but Amazon and Azure are a little bit different here. When you enter payment information for Amazon, it doesn't tell, they don't tell you, oh, your free tier is expiring. Well, they do tell you your free tier is expiring, but they don't tell you that your credit is running out. Do you want to enable pay as you go? Amazon just goes ahead and you pay, right? With Azure, when you create the account, it'll say, do you want to enable pay as you go so that if your credit expires, you can go ahead and keep using this account? You don't, if you don't set that up, there isn't just instantaneous billing after, after you run out of your resources. So, um, provide the payment information, the account, you'll get a screen that says the account is being set up, and then you can fully enable uh, Windows Azure, and by fully enable, it's saying, it's not any kind of functionality enablement, it is, when I fully enable Azure, I'm saying, yes, charge my credit card after my credit expires, but if you don't do that, it just, they don't charge it. All right. And then the rest of the steps are intercloud fabric steps, and we'll, and we'll talk about those when we get to it. So sign up for free, just like you did at the Amazon. You go to get started for free. Create an account, just like you did before. Um, you know, these, these are all very similar, straightforward. You verify your email address through the email. They'll verify that address that you've associated with the account. And then you'll do another a verification after you put in payment information. Sign in that you, for, with the account you just created. Now you're, so kind of like Amazon, you're creating an account and then you're creating an account for AWS. Same thing with Azure, you're creating an account at Microsoft and then you're creating an account for Azure. So you go ahead, you do some mobile verification, you put in some payment information and you accept the agreement. You do the mobile verification, go beyond that. All right, your account is being set up. You can click refresh or you can come back to it. And once your account is ready, um, They'll tell you that you have 30 days and $200 that you can utilize. Now, if any of you have MSDN accounts, MSDN gives you $150 credit every month for Azure. InterCloud Fabric works with that. So if you do some um, management of the connections that you make to InterCloud Fabric, then um, you, if you shut down those connections when you're not using them, because it's a VM running in, the, in, in Azure or running in Amazon, it's going to incur costs, but if you manage your connections to these cloud providers through the InterCloud Fabric portal, then you can, uh, I've run uh, on my $150 Azure account, not that I have to, Cisco will gladly pay for me to run as much as I want, actually to the tune of almost $100,000 so far this year. Um, but they'll pay for that, but if I want to, you know, I'm, I'm a corporate, I'm conscientious corporate citizen, I've been using some MSDN account, but also so I can, I can prove that it does work with, with uh, MSDN. But you get 30 days to get $200. With MSDN accounts, you'll get um, 30 days and $150. And actually, since I have multiple MSDN accounts, um, I'm working with, with, with Azure to see if they'll actually let you put that into one bucket if you have multi linked MSDN accounts. So anyway, you got the 30 days, you got the $200. If you fully enable Windows Azure, it doesn't mean that Azure is not fully enabled if you don't do this. All this means is that if I go to this point, I'm going to uh, connect it to a, a, the, my payment information and continue to pay once my credit runs out, if I use my entire credit. Okay. So how do you connect InterCloud Fabric to, um, to Azure? With Amazon, they gave you an access key and an access ID. Those two entities, or those two you know, codes, let Amazon know who was connecting and what your uh, capabilities were. For Azure, you actually take the certificate from InterCloud Fabric, the VM certificate from InterCloud Fabric, 
and you upload it to Azure. So initially, you'll, there's a button, export uh, Azure certificate. Click that, this little pop-up comes out, you save the certificate. Once you save the certificate, you go to Azure, click on, on settings down the very lower left of the, of the Azure account, click on management certificates, and upload that certificate you just exported from InterCloud Fabric. Now when InterCloud Fabric makes the connection, a Azure already sees that certificate coming in from the, because you've pre-positioned pre -positioned it there, and you're allowed to make the connection. So you upload it, just to, it's an upload process. All right. So connecting to Azure, you've uploaded your certificate. Oh, I should go back one because I need to show you. Um, there's a subscription ID. It's the second column over, the subscription ID. You want to copy that because you need that with InterCloud Fabric to make the connection. So copy this, the subscription ID. And that's not something that disappears. Anytime you go to settings and look at your subscriptions, you'll see your subscription IDs, and you can copy that. So to connect to Azure, it's that same screen we're all familiar with from being users of InterCloud Fabric or UCS Director. Oh, I guess nobody. So you pick from the drop-down Public Cloud Azure. You put the Access ID in, which is it sh we should change the label to be Subscription ID. I believe they're going to change that in the patch release that's coming out um, next week or the week after. We have a patch release or maintenance release uh, coming out. So you put in your Access ID, which is your Subscription ID. Click Validate Credentials, and back will come a region list, just like Amazon, for you to pick from. Now, what regions are available with Azure? Every region is available for Azure, except the GovCloud regions. Their government regions are not available. And if your billing address is not in Australia, you will not see the Australian regions. But if your billing address is in Australia, you will see all the regions. So if you were thinking about moving to Australia for a better cloud capability, I'm just saying Azure lets you use their Australian regions and all the other ones, well, not the Gov ones. But if you are not an Australian, if you do not have an, a, a, well, you don't have to be an Australian. They don't ask you if you're Australian or not. But if you don't have an Australian billing address associated with your payment information, you are not using the, the two Australian regions for, for um, Azure. However, with Amazon, you are allowed to use Sydney. So I'm not sure what the issue is, or I shouldn't say, I'm not sure why the division, but you won't be able to pick the Australian regions for Azure because, unless you have a billing address there. So anyway, you pick your region, you make your connection, and you're good to go. Just like Amazon, you have limits placed on your account. Remember, I didn't do any policy stuff here. I didn't go to a marketplace. I didn't have to do any of that with Azure. It's so easy. Um, not that other stuff is hard, I'm just, just being silly. But um, with Azure, what you're going to want to do is if you want to go above 20 cores or 20 cloud services, storage accounts, not a big deal, but 20 cores and 20 cloud services, 20 cores, 20 cloud services, if you want to go more than them, create a support request and they'll, they'll, literally they'll, they'll up them within 24 hours or less and you're good to go. You don't have to do this at first, but if you get to the point where you're consuming more cores and more uh, cloud services, then you, you could go ahead and request a service limit increase. For Azure, the InterCloud Fabric switch, which is the peer end of that, or the peer side of that InterCloud extension, is an A3. The InterCloud Fabric firewall, the VSG, the Virtual Security Gateway, is an A3. Two instances. Now, the thing that you don't see here is the CSR. We do have routing capabilities in Azure. They are built into the InterCloud Fabric switch. This InterCloud Fabric switch in Azure does layer two and layer three. So this one VM has the functionality of two VMs in Amazon. The only difference in Azure is that our routing capabilities in Azure do not include the VPN capability. We include inter-VLAN routing, we include default gateway and extended default gateway, and we include um, static and dynamic NAT. Four things. Um, I always have one more finger out than the things that I'm talking about, so just subtract one, all right? Um, so 
we have we don't support VPN on the what is called the integrated router in Azure. The intercloud fabric switch in Azure is also the integrated router. Um, so one less VM, but from an instant standpoint, our infrastructure VMs are going to consume. You know, what I didn't put here. I should have put the number of cores. Um, each one of these consumes, I believe. I had it up. Before. I couldn't. I can't. I think it's four on the switch and two on the firewall. It's not configurable. If you look at the Intercloud Fabric release notes, I took that, that table right from the release notes. I should have went one more column over to show you the number of cores. But um, so Azure counts it a little bit differently. Amazon counts it based on instances, regardless of how many cores that instance consumes. Azure counts it on cores based on what you're consuming. So think about what you're consuming. And, um, and you might have to request a service limit increase. It's very easy. Support desk or support, um, uh, you know, flow in their in their in their website. Request an instance increase or excuse me, a core increase, and they'll give you more. Any questions on Azure, on how to create an account in Azure, or how Intercloud Fabric works with Azure? All right. So no questions. That was my, oh, wait, I got a question. So you talked about um, using routers in the cloud and a switch and a firewall, and then there's the inter-cloud fabric connector, which is just kind of a virtual ethernet connection. So a layer two connection between the clouds. Um, how do the two clouds route between one another? You've got different address spaces, or is there any network magic that has to happen? And are the VPNs just for the like the customers to connect in? Yeah. So the so the magic that happens is really um, intercloud fabric magic. We put a, a virtual Ethernet module in your enterprise for each cloud connection, right? We put a virtual Ethernet module in in your enterprise, and I should I should indicate that in your enterprise you can run. Uh, our infrastructure components on uh, VMware, Hyper-V, or OpenStack. OpenStack, Icehouse. Um, so the, the virtual Ethernet module that's in your enterprise connects to the virtual Ethernet module running in the cloud provider, and we do an, a network overlay across those two. It, there's nothing VPN-y going on there. When you put a, a router in the, and, and at this point in, in the Amazon environment, we don't have a, the VPN capability for routing in the Azure environment, but when you put the router in there, if you utilize the VPN component, you could talk between two extended cloud segments. So if you have an intercloud fabric uh, extension from a, a data center on the East Coast and one from a data center on the West Coast, and they both terminate in the same region, maybe a centralized region, you could have a router in one and route in the other, and you could VPN between the two of them and create this sort of uh, cross-country link if you wanted to. So the router, VPN function is really for services connecting into that intercloud fabric environment. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Anybody else have another question? Uh, is it possible for us to download that software, the ICF software for the, the private side, and actually for the provider side as well? So the, the question is the, about downloading the Intercloud Fabric software. So the Intercloud Fabric software for the business side, and there's actually two versions of it. There's the Intercloud Fabric provide, the Intercloud Fabric for business, which is what a customer or you guys install in your enterprise. And you can download that directly from, um, from uh, Cisco's website, and that comes with a free 60-day li license and 20 hybrid cloud unit. There is also another co component called Intercloud Fabric um, provider platform that is not available directly on the on the on our website that is something that you have to work with the business unit because it's for providers to put in their environment to allow intercloud fabric business to connect to them I didn't discuss any of that in, in this one but that is something through a, an engagement with the with the engineering group all right so uh, last thing if you download the slide deck, if it, I, I'm not sure how it's made available to you, but if you download the slide deck, here are all the Intercloud Fabric sessions that are going on um, this, this week. Some already happened earlier today, but um, I have one on Wednesday morning, 8 to 10, 
a lot of, lot of, lot more uh, in-depth information. Although this is, I feel like this is stuff you need to know as well. Um, come see our, our World of Solutions uh, exhibit because we, we have a, an intercloud fabric shell uh, extended into Amazon where we have a three-tier app running and you can vote for your favorite superhero, but it's cloud-based website and enterprise-based uh, database, so we're running through that intercloud fabric connection. Uh, if I'm your favorite speaker so far, all right, just uh, tweet my Twitter handle with my favorite speaker, all right? Uh, you could win something. I don't know if I win anything. Um, complete your session evaluation. Fives across the board, fives. If you're not gonna do a five, then don't do it, all right? Just don't. If you feel like I didn't know anything, talk to me later, if I would, whatever. Um, uh, the self-paced labs, the DevNet sandbox, all that stuff, you know, give it a shot. Uh, and um, thanks so much for coming. Oh, thank you, thank you, it's awesome. Um, so the next session in this, in this classroom is me. So if you can handle it, another half, it's only half an hour, so don't worry. It's, I'm talking about the InterCloud Fabric uh, northbound API. So how can you integrate InterCloud Fabric into um, your environment? So, but if you are going to do it, they want you to rescan so that we have an, uh, an awareness of the attendees that are here for that as well as the other one.